As we continue this course about understanding abuse, an introduction to understand abuse, what I would like to do in this lecture is to look at the concept of sibling abuse, what happens when siblings abuse each other. Now, this is um, this lesson is going to be basically a list of different behaviours and effects that happen when there is sibling abuse. Now, the question is, what is sibling abuse? It's very difficult to be able to differentiate between what is abusive behaviour and what is normal sibling provocation, the way brothers and sisters annoy each other. I, I, I mean, you see the way that siblings interact with each other and a lot of the time there's one that picks on the other and the other re reacts emotionally or one is more calculated than annoying the other. Um, so there's a lot of the time sibling rivalry that goes on in families and parents try and raise their children to to learn how to re relate in loving ways to, to people rather than in such selfish ways. So the question is, what's the difference between that normal sibling rivalry that happens in every home and what is abusive? So I'm going to have a list of behaviours which even most of these occur in normal sibling rivalry. So as I said, it's not easy to put your finger on when something is abusive. Um, so it's been suggested that it can be known if something is abusive by its constancy, how often the behaviour occurs and how severe the behaviour is, how intense it is. So again, it's a pattern of behaviour that's coming through. Now, if we think about families these days, certainly in the West, now I'm looking at a Western perspective. Um, I know in other countries, and for example, in Africa, the whole concept of family is very different. So as a Westerner, I'm not speaking to that. Um, and I, I, I want to be very careful there because what I'm saying now um, if you were to take that from my Western culture and apply it to your uh, another culture without thinking it through, it could be harmful. And that's the last thing I want to do. So please hear me out. I'm speaking from a Western culture. I'm Scottish. I've lived in Belgium and Europe for many, many years. I've got a lot of influence from all different Western cultures. And this is my perspective. Um, so again, please uh, talk to people about what you've heard think it through, think it through in the Bible, get advice if you're living in a culture that's different than my own. So siblings could be biological. The two children have the same biological parents or they could be step siblings. One of their, par their, their, one of their parents has married someone else. So they're half brothers and sisters, so to speak, when they share one biological parent. Could be through foster care or adoption. So someone has been brought into the family uh, and then, then gains uh, uh, siblings. So what does this involve? And this is going to be a list of behaviours that often is involved when uh, when there's abuse. And again, it's to do with its constancy and its uh, intensity. They'll be regul regularly lying about the other. So especially when it could lead other people to think badly about the sibling. The calling them names are very characteristic of abusive behaviour. Ridiculing degrading, putting them down and trying to demean them. These would fall under verbal abuse. And if you go back to earlier lessons, belittling, putting them down, intimidating. Again, the common abusive behaviours, so intimidating and making them scared, threatening violence. It's a very common thing in sibling behaviour. Again, constancy and intensity. Harassment, humiliating, scorning, uh, gossiping. So talking about their sibling behind their back to other people encouraging others to isolate you so maybe getting going to a group of people uh, friends and encouraging them to leave you out provoking trying to uh, when you when you live in the same home you know what annoys someone else you know the buttons to press so the sibling would deliberately provoke um something on the on the victim so that they get upset they react in the way that the uh, abuser wants they put them down in relation to their opinions and the things they seek to accomplish. So rather than encouraging them and making them want to to achieve things in life, make the most of their life, they put them down and maybe try and block things as well. Saying that they'll fail at whatever they do. So there's no point in trying because you're just going to fail anyway. What's the point? Um, blaming the victim when things do not go well. 
even if they had no direct control of the situation. So, so it was the victim's fault. Making derogatory and insulting comments about their appearance. Um, say they, they, they do look good, but uh, don't make horrible comments about the clothes or the like girl, the makeup or, or such things to really uh, affect their view of themselves and who they are and how they carry themselves through life. Responding with hostility and defensiveness if you speak to them about their problems and they find ways to take revenge on you. So remember, abusive people are entitled people. Who are, they're, 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 they're in the right. Everyone else is there for them. And if everyone else was to treat them the way they should be treated, then everything would be fine. So if you uh, speak to them about something, they become hostile and defensive. That goes back, if you remember, I spoke about similar things with abusive parents, drama, denial, deflection, or DARVO. If you, if you remember those lectures, are very similar. And then they, they, they take their revenge on you. They attack you. They make fun of you. The hobbies you have or the friends that you spend time with. So chameleon-like behavior is a chameleon animal that changes its colors wherever it is. So they change their characters depending on which environment they're in. So they'll change their character by changing their behavior according to the person that they are with. It could destroy their pers your personal possessions, break things, throw them away. Um, harm or kill their pets, cyber bully them, uh, so on social media bully them or even take away access to their cell phones or mobile phones or um, block their access to the internet, exclude them, exclude them from the group, uh, and group teasing, so going to your friends or a group that you're in and getting the whole group to gang up on you, it's very, it's when you're growing up an incredibly, for any, any person, especially when you're growing up, Incredibly difficult thing to know how to deal with. So what are the common outcomes of sibling abuse? And these are things to look for if you're trying to help someone who's had a sibling like this. They could cry, scream or hide in an attempt to isolate themselves from their abuser. And if this is an adult who's grown up in this situation, you can see this tendency to isolation might become, be something that's become part of their life. They could think suicidal thoughts hold a low view of who they are in comparison to other people just thinking there when it says thinking suicidal thoughts again that reflects again the importance of really knowing the person that you're meeting with if someone said uh, I don't see the purpose of my life I'm thinking of ending it all and all we say is come on God loves you he's got a purpose for your life yeah. there's no condemnation for those in Christ all things work together for the good um, if that's all we do, that's not helpful. Um, there's someone, say it's someone who has an abusive sibling, we have to get to know that person, think what's behind these suicidal thoughts, what's going on in their life and how are they responding to them and then we can, with the Lord, effectively help people. Being dependent on the abuser, so remember I said abuse is about control. The, the abuser controls the victim, the victim becomes dependent on the abuser in the emotions, thoughts and behaviour. So the sibling becomes dependent on the abuser as they go through life. I've said before that as human beings we were made in God's image and as part of we were made um, in his image at three different aspects I spoke about earlier, relational, substantial and functional. Uh, as well as that we're also physical. So we have um, a physical aspect, physical bodies, and our immaterial uh, aspects to us as well. And because these these two are not two separate things, I've said this in previous lectures. So how we go through life affects our physical body. If we think fearful thoughts, if we're worried, if we're anxious, it will affect our physical body, and our bodies affect our souls as well because they're intertwined. So if someone is experiencing abuse, there'll probably be physiological complaints. They'll have physical issues that they are dealing with. They could suffer from depression, a loss of hope. <clears throat> this is if, this is the way my life is. My family doesn't love me. Um, it could be uh, a, as a result of the way that they view themselves and who they are. If they're always being put down, always being told how bad they are or how deficient they are. They could be living in this sense of shame <clears throat> that is, that they are less than other people and are losers and have no worth and have no purpose in life. It would be better if they'd never been born. Uh, 
just the hopelessness of it all. I think they could be especially true if they compare themselves to other people who have loving homes, loving families. Um, I think I said in a previous lecture, as well as the physical reasons for depression, if you live in fear, anger, guilt uh, for any length of time, uh, it can lead to depression, uh, as well as sorrow. Uh, staying in your sorrow can, can lead to depression. <coughs> Excuse me. So just like I said about suicidal thoughts, if someone's suffering from depression, you really need to know what's going on in that person's life. What what are they thinking? How are they viewing themselves? Uh, how are people treating them? How are they responding to that? How how are they living in all aspects of their life? They could have nightmares uh, because because of what's going on and what's how they're processing what's going on in their life. Become aggressive if someone hurts you regular basis and you're always being attacked or bullied or or abused a lot of people become aggressive as a way of no one's going to touch me no one's going to harm me and they become a ball of aggression can be verbally aggressive or or physically aggressive just you know like no one's going to take advantage of me fear and anxiety what's going to happen to me how are they going to treat me how are people going to treat me what about my future what's going to happen to me could have phobias um, or be apathetic. Just what's the point? Why bother? And uh, this is nothing helps. Nothing brings any change. And any confusion, which I <clears throat> mentioned in a previous lecture as well. Why? Why am I being treated this way? What did I do that caused this? Um, trying to figure that out and not coming to any conclusion because they're blaming themselves for the treatment, whereas it's actually the abuser that's the perpetrator that's. Uh, guilty of it. Educational under or overachievement. Uh, they could try and prove themselves in order to be loved and, set or, and accepted. Or maybe out of fear. <coughs> Excuse me. If I don't achieve, then I'll be punished. Um, or underachievement. I better not achieve, uh, although I'll be punished. Or I'm not able to do things. Um, so who they are, they're not making the most of life, not living the life that the Lord has for them. Uh, so that's sibling abuse oh, that was helpful for you and uh, to be able to think that through and uh, how siblings can treat each other in abusive ways